look at the high performance car development always like if you make a race car yeah? so you, you start off the grid you need power yeah you need good transmission you need a good clutch and then the next thing is you come to the first corner you mark the corner and you accelerate out of the corner so this stage is basically we were also focusing on with our engineers to uh, go through this yeah, procedure with uh, all different parts of the car. So we have the power and then to make a good start we need a robust and good to control clutch. So we uh, put a lot of effort on the clutch with a special uh, clutch pad but also the whole control how we work the clutch, yeah, the force level, the kiss point and so on. There we put a lot of efforts, we strengthened a little bit the transmission, uh, made the shifting a little bit more, yeah, let's say, talkative, responsive, a little bit more notchy. We reduced significantly the shift travel, so, and uh, we, with the shorter shifting, we have clear gate separation, we think uh, also for, for intense limit track driving, uh, we provide a pretty good transmission here. So, but also for everyday driving, it's still very capable and not annoying. So I think there also, it was all about finding that balance. So shifting through the gears, full power accelerations, this is where uh, the Veloster angle can support this kind of sporty driving, but also be relaxed depending also on the different drive modes. So then the next thing then, which is important, uh, that we added the ref matching. I mean, with our end cars, we do not only want to attract the well-established and enthusiast uh, high performance drivers or the track day guys. We also want to attract many people, young people, who never had such car before. And so for those guys, uh, the, the heel and toe, uh, uh, artistry on the three pedals is not so easy. So we support them with the ref matching and we also have different tuning for the ref matching in the different driving modes. And the good thing is uh, we have a, a button on the steering wheel. So for those, for the experts, some of you or all of you maybe, they rather do the heel and toe themselves. But with a little push on the button on the steering wheel, the ref matching is gone or you call it back. So we have all the flexibility in the car to provide it or to leave it. And you can even adjust the level. And yeah, in the beginning, I mean, I always started the heel and toe myself after two, three corners, after Hatzenbach here on the Nordschleife, I said, ah, come forget it, I do it myself. But you know, nowadays, no, I don't do the heel and toe anymore myself. I, I cannot beat the system, it's just better than me. Yeah. And okay, I'm getting older, maybe some younger guys from you, they can beat it, I, I can't beat it anymore. So I gave up on it, yeah. The other thing is, so when we go back to the scheme of a racing, so we accelerate down the road, full throttle. You also, when you have this intense load changes through the shifting, uh, you wanna have a powertrain installed in a front wheel drive car that is controlled nicely. So the whole concept, how we do the engine and transmission mount, the torque bars, uh, you can see our philosophy down there in that uh, diagram. It's a very controlled movement, and not only for acceleration, but especially you notice from front wheel drive cars for braking, downshifting, this intense hopping. So I think we have controlled this in a very good way. We could avoid the uh, active mounts and uh, so, we found uh, ways to tune this that it serves well even for intense track driving with very sticky tires. So we also tested uh, Veloster N, i30N, with, even with slicks. I mean, we, you heard about, we drove the Nürburgring, uh, but we also drove a lot with cup tires to make sure that when the enthusiasts take it on the track day, that all those systems are good enough also for one step up from what the showroom car on, on almost normal tires, sporty tires, the starts with. Yeah, so we come to the corner, we do the heavy braking, and then of course uh, we need strong brakes, and we need a good cooling for the brakes. And of course we could have put a set of Brembo brakes on the car, like almost everybody else does. No problem, I mean, we, we do this on other cars in a higher price segment. But the whole story of N is, to provide affordable, fun to drive. 
And that is the, the whole, it's a key story of those cars, i30N, Veloster N, not to spend the money, not, not go the easy way, not buy the Brembos. Yeah, try to find solutions from our own Korean network of suppliers, use our own in-house technology and bring it to a performance level that we compete with the expensive stuff that the others buy. And the brakes, I think, is a good example. So we took a, a, a break from, from the shelf, from a different, from a bigger car, and we tuned it a lot with brake pad development, with the cooling on the car, that this brake is strong enough and on a level like a typical high performance brake, but we don't spend the money on it. Yeah? To keep the cost of the car down, that this is an affordable, fun to drive car that many people can afford. That is one important story of the end car. So we did a lot with aerodynamics to support the brakes and uh, the cars you are running here today, this is just normal US spec reproduction car. There's no special on the brakes, no, no special brake pads, nothing, just the, the normal stuff.